Have you ever worried about being canceled? Losing your job because of standing up for what you believe? It nearly happened to me, but I'm still standing. My name is Dr. Nicholas Merriweather. For over 20 years, I've had the joy of serving as a philosophy professor at Shawnee State University in Portsmouth, Ohio. During that time, I focused my scholarship and teaching on the intersection of philosophy, ethics, religion, and political theory. When I began teaching my political philosophy class in the spring of 2018, I had no idea the first day's discussion would bring me to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit, but it did. On that day, a male student raised his hand, and I responded with a simple, yes, sir. I refer to my students as sir or ma'am or by a title, Mr. or Miss, for example, and their last name. The formality fosters an atmosphere of seriousness, mutual respect, and courtesy. And I've always referred to students based on their biological sex. After all, that is who they are. After class, this student approached me, identified himself as a woman, and insisted that I refer to him as such, using feminine terms. When I expressed reservations about his demands, the student became belligerent, got in my face, and began circling around me to intimidate me. Swearing at me, he promised to get me fired if I didn't instantly agree to his demands. Within days, I offered to accommodate him. I was willing to use any name he preferred, and I was also willing to simply drop sir, ma'am, and other sex-specific titles for him. I had hoped that university administrators would understand my position, even if some disagreed with it. At first, they agreed that I had struck the right balance. After all, I was willing to avoid using a pronoun that offended my student. So why would they force me to use a pronoun that offends my conscience? But that wasn't enough to satisfy the student, and the university soon reversed its position. Officials now insisted that I either use identity-based terms, including recently concocted pronouns like zeer and z for all students, or eliminate all sex-referencing terms from my vocabulary at all times. This would have required me to speak English as it has never been spoken in the history of the language. If I didn't agree to abide by the university's coercive demand, I face punishment that could end my career. And even if I did, every slip-up would become grounds for complaints, intrusive investigations, and punishment. Sure enough, when I did not accept these demands, the university punished me and rejected my appeal. This is what we have come to expect from cancel culture, a zero-sum game where only complete submission can be accepted. No compromise, no free speech, no efforts for mutual respect. So with the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, I filed a lawsuit to defend my rights and protect the job I love. I felt confident that in a country in which schools cannot force students to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, courts would recognize that universities cannot force professors to say things we do not believe, especially when they are so self-evidently false. This is why I was greatly disheartened when the district court ruled against me on every point, throwing out my case. But we appealed. And after more than two years of litigation, the Sixth Circuit rightly recognized the university's demands as an assault on the First Amendment freedoms of faculty members. The court wrote, If professors lacked free speech protections when teaching, a university would wield alarming power to compel ideological conformity. A university president could require a pacifist to declare that war is just, a civil rights icon to condemn the freedom riders, a believer to deny the existence of God, or a Soviet emigre to address his students as comrades. That cannot be. Exactly. Professors in public universities cannot be coerced into endorsing an ideology we reject. Before our current cancel culture era, this would have been as obvious as any truism in higher education or American society, including men can't be pregnant. This was never just about a pronoun. It's about what that pronoun communicates. It's about being forced 
to endorse an ideology. Tolerance is a two-way street. A university classroom is not an assembly line for one type of thought. Students, and more importantly, administrators, must learn to accept that the freedom to disagree is part and parcel of living in a free society, and they need to do so before it's too late. Find out more about cases like mine at adflegal.org. You can also find more videos like this on Alliance Defending Freedom's YouTube channel, Facebook page, and at adflegal.org slash freedommatters.